Hey guys, I'm back with another video. I know it's been like five months or so, but there's reasons behind that, and I can go into more detail with that in another video if you want. But for now, I want to upload this video about uh, open world map transitions in Game Maker because I don't see it posted much. I don't know. I haven't seen much people talk about it, and there's not many tutorials online. The only resource for it I've ever found was this right here, which is just a $10 asset on the marketplace, which might be a little steep and a little pretty ridiculous because this isn't something that takes that long to create. It took me just a few hours and a little longer because I wanted to make the, my package good or better for you guys, but still $10, probably not worth it. It does the same thing. You can do it yourself. But anyway, what do I mean by room, the room transitions? Well, I have four rooms here. One with the player, then one with some other objects, and they're all just small basic rooms. And how I want it to be is, if I have my player here, I want the other rooms to be like tiled next to these so that when my player moves across, it'll see like, if it moves to the left, it'll already see like, this room right here and it won't look like there's a transition it'll look like they are together and they are seamless so how do we do this well i could go into a video and create the code from scratch for you guys but i actually created the code myself and i have given it to you guys to use so if you go to this link it's my github why i didn't use the marketplace well it was getting a little weird and wasn't working for some reason wasn't letting me upload it so you just come here to this link, I'll have it in the description, and you download the file. And it'll download, I already have it downloaded, but once you're in Game Maker, go to your extensions, right click, import extension. And then navigate to where you downloaded it. For me, I have it here. So just click it, and it'll come up. And then if you double click it, you can do import, import all, and push OK and it'll just import all the scripts. If you want to read more about this, all the scripts, you can just open this file right here, and this will tell you a lot more about how to work with it. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create an object, empty object, you can call it anything you want. I'm just gonna call object gen for object generate. Make sure it's marked as persistent, then go to the create event. I'll add in some code. And the first line of code is open world initialize or init. Type in, there should be three to four arguments in this. For the first one, it's force reset. You, while you're debugging this game, you can set this to true. If you're ready to release the game, set it to false. What this does is essentially the code when you start the game will go through every room that you have or what it calls every chunk and it will save each one to a file in your file system. However, if you already have the files that exist, you already have every room saved, there's no sense in resaving them if the computer already has the data for them saved. So setting it to true will make it so that every time you run it, the game, it'll resave the files, which is good when you're debugging the game and you need to make changes, you want to always resave the file. But if you're the player, you probably won't have to be changing the files, so you want to set it to false. Focus object. This is the object that will be in the center of the screen at all times. This could be your player, or it can be an, some camera object that follows your player, whatever. But essentially, no matter what, the camera or the view should always be in the center of this player or this object the code itself will automatically center the view for you you don't have to worry about that you just have to worry about moving the object itself so for now i'll just set it to object player and for chunk size i'm going to do 320 what this is this is actually kind of important what it is is what's going to be the size of your rooms 
So here you see each one of my rooms is 320 by 320. I only chose these numbers because I like working with smaller chunks than bigger chunks. You can work with a bit bigger ones, but just know that the bigger they get, the more stutter you might have as you move from one section to another. So you might get a little bit of a jump, like it will freeze for a half a second or something. So that's why sometimes working with smaller bits is better. So yeah, each room is 320 by 320. Now, in the rooms, the views don't matter at all. Don't worry about that. They won't make a difference. Okay, come back to the code, and that's all. Now, you remember, you have to remember that the chunk size should always stay the same. All those rooms should be the same. If you happen to add objects, though, to outside of the room, so if I have objects out here, they will still be created and they will still work, but it'll look weird and it might cause problems so try not to have to resort to that it's not the end of the world if you have to but just know that it will still work they will still be created it just will might look weird okay do for the number line now we can start adding each room and tiling them together or stitching them together as you might call it have an open world room type in the coordinates for the chunk so the top left chunk will be room zero zero. This is just how I decided to name the rooms. How you name the rooms doesn't matter. This is just an easy way for me to remember which one goes where. So the one directly to the right, the one directly below, and the chunk in the bottom right corner. Change the names. And there we go. I add all four rooms and they should be stitching together perfectly. Okay, now I can type in open world. Well, actually, I'll wait to do this line. So I can push check. Then I'm going to add event, step event, step. Go into here. And type in open world step. That's all you need. There's no arguments, no nothing. Do that and push OK. Now, before I actually get this all to start working, I'm going to show you what the game looks like when you when I run it without it. So without anything right now, I just have the one room that I start in with the player that moves around. I have a chest here. If I interact with it, it'll open the chest and that's fine. So it works, except again, I want it to be stitched. So I want it to be able to show multiple rooms. Okay, so I push OK. So here's what I'm going to do. I want to create an empty room name size doesn't matter none of it matters call it room main room push check and in the room the only thing we need is object gen the object we created that's all it needs and it'll be fine so the last thing we should do then is go to views and you need to enable and show them and set the size now the size of the view, what I would recommend is don't make it any bigger than the chunk size or tw any bigger than two times the chunk size. So I have a chunk size of 320. So 640 would be the maximum view size that I would want to create. Otherwise you might start seeing the chunks unload and reload. So I push check and play it. And here we go. It's a little stretched, but that's only because the port's not the same. But as you see, I have the first room there, a room here, the high room, and the zero room. They all work just fine. Now there's one more problem I want to address. And if I were to interact with these chests and I walk away a bit and then I come back. See, it didn't do this one because this one didn't, I didn't go far and away from this room, but this chest it reopened and that's because when you walk far away from the rooms and you come back what happens is when you walk away all of the rooms despawn it destroys every object in the room and when I come back it recreates them in the same place that they're supposed to be however that means that 
the open chest gets destroyed and then it's recreated and it's recreated and so it thinks it's closed. A way around that is if you go here where we created the rooms, below here I can type in non-static and the name of the object that I don't want to be static. Now that means is any chest object that's created by object gen by this generation will not ever be destroyed or recreated. So it'll only be created one time and it'll stay there. So now if I run the game, come here, and now if I can walk away, the time walk away, I should probably open the chest first. That would make this obvious and easier to realize. So now I can walk away. I'll walk away a little further this time, and if I come back, both chests are still open. They weren't destroyed, and they weren't recreated. So this is working just fine. Each room is stitched together. If I were to close it and rerun it, it would still work. So that is everything you need to know for this tutorial. Hopefully this helps. Hopefully you guys can find some use for this. If you guys end up making any projects for this, I would love to see them. But anyway, until next time. See ya.